Ravi from Green Technologies here. We're going to be talking about the Phase Runner 1.4 software today. Uh, there's a couple new features in it, and one of the most exciting things is that the setup for a new motor is a lot easier now. So we have a feature called default parameters, and we like to use that here internally for producing kits, uh, as well as uh, for our customers. If they play around with their settings, you can easily load it back to defaults uh, quite quickly. So what I'm going to be doing today is setting up uh, this kit over here that uh, has a customer's GMAC and a battery, and uh, we're going to get it tuned up for them so that when they get it uh, to their house, that they can just quickly build the bike and it'll run like a dream. Like any of the other uh, Phase Runner, Base Runner products, you need to have a USB to TTL adapter, a uh, computer, and uh, your controller needs to be powered on uh, to get it to communicate with the software. You can download the latest software at ebikes.ca, and from there, um, we'll get started. So the first thing to do would be to connect up the system to the computer, make sure that the drivers are installed for the USB to TTL adapter, and then turn on the uh, battery. So I'll turn the battery on right now. I've got everything connected up. And we can see just right here that the red LED on the controller's on. So that means that uh, the controller has power. Uh, as well, I've got a cycle analyst in this setup. We can see that it's connected. Um, and powered on. At the actual software suite, um, the important thing to note here is that it says that there's a base runner L10 connected. Uh, that section of the screen will tell you which controller is actually plugged into the software as well as whether or not it's connected. Um, so the motor that we have right now, uh, it's not programmed for this GMAC motor. I'm going to run it. It's really chunky. It doesn't run well. So I'm going to quick just go to the load defaults button in the uh, top corner here. So if this is the first time you've run the software, the best thing to do is to get the latest version of all the different default profiles that we offer. So I'll click that button. There's going to be an option that says download defaults. At the bottom of this screen, there's a, a button here that uh, you can click, and it will bring a window up that lets you select which profiles you want to download. So this is a GMAC motor, so I'm going to grab the GMAC parameter files, download that. It will just pop up and say that it's downloaded those. So it say OK. And then from the list of manufacturers, I'll select G, uh, GMAC. Select the model. In this case, it's an eight-turn motor. And we'll click Apply. So on the screen, you'll see all these different stars appear. And those are parameters that are different from what's currently loaded on the, on the controller. Next, I'll press the Save Parameters button, and I'll just wait until that button that's grayed is no longer grayed. So that uh, is going through. And so once that's all finished up, we'll do a test run on the motor. Sweet, so that's all complete. So now I'm just going to quickly grab my throttle, spin the motor. I verified it's spinning in the right direction. It sounds good. It spun up smoothly, so that's great. So. Since this is a base runner, uh, we know that the battery voltage can't go above 52 volts. And since this customer has a 52 volt battery, uh, all we're going to do is just verify that the battery limits uh, are appropriate. So I can see right here that the maximum regen voltage uh, parameters are right here. And so what you typically want to do is set the uh, start regen voltage to the final charge of your battery. Uh, this way, when you connect the battery up, if it's fully charged, you won't get a little LED flashing warning. If you do want to lower that value, so you don't want your motor controller to regen your battery above its full charge voltage, that's a totally fine thing to do. Um, we typically recommend that you set the end voltage at least 0.5 volts above the start voltage. One volt is also fine. Um, gives you a bit more headroom. The other thing to check is the motor limits. So there's a power rating, a phase current, and a regen phase current rating. So for most of our systems, the default parameters are set to the reasonable values and the reasonable maximums. So for example, if you had a small geared motor, the maximum value might be 40 amps, which corresponds to a certain torque on the motor. And what we recommend is not increasing it above that value. So the risk of increasing it above that is that you could strip the gears or overheat the motor. Um, so if you do want to lower the motor, for example, just to uh, save battery or 
have a little bit less assistance, then you can totally do that, but we don't recommend raising it. Um, the next feature I want to talk about is virtual electronic freewheeling. That's a quick feature to enable the controller to put a little bit of extra power into the motor after you get off the throttle. And the reason for that is for geared motors where there's a clutch, um, what it does is it'll keep the motor engaged in that clutch. So if you go full throttle, there's no lag where the motor will spin up and slam against the clutch uh, because your vehicle's still moving. So this will use a little bit extra power, but uh, I think it's safer for the clutches in general. Um, the other thing you can use virtual electronic freewheeling for is uh, for a direct drive motor. So with a direct drive motor, when you're not using the system, typically there's some drag associated with uh, that style of motor construction. And you know, if you're riding around, it kind of feels like a flat tire. So you can add a little bit of current there, um, and what it will do is override that feeling of a flat tire. So if you're biking around, it won't feel like you're dragging a heavy system if you're just using your legs. And for a direct drive motor, that extra power is usually easily recovered and then some by just having regenerative braking enabled. So it's a, it's a good way to get kind of the best of both worlds. Uh, get your direct drive motor so you can get regen braking, save your brakes, get a little bit more range of your battery, and uh, also not feel like you have a big heavy drag system if you're not using any power. If you have a system that you've uh, purchased a phase runner or base runner for and it's not on our default list, what we typically recommend is pulling a motor that's similar uh, to one of the motors that's on our list. So for example, if you have a BMC motor, you can grab an Easy or a GMAC profile and use that as a starting point. You'll likely have to do some further tuning and maybe do an auto-tune to dial in the RPMs per volt as well as the motor parameters, but it's usually a good starting point for the uh, tuning of the motor. Um, uh, the other last feature I wanted to show was the uh, dashboard. So the dashboard itself is uh, a tool that um, kind of shows you what's going on in the system at, uh, at any given moment. So it tells you what the battery voltage is, the battery current, motor current, uh, the variety of different parameters, as well as um, the hall signal. So it can quickly tell you just by rotating a motor here that uh, the halls are all functioning properly. So I can see as I rotate that all the hall patterns are correctly uh, operating, which is great. Uh, the other thing it tells you in this upper corner here is the kind of inputs. So what's your throttle voltage? What does that correspond to in terms of a percentage of the motor torque? Uh, is your brake um, engaged or not? What's the speed of the motor? And if you've programmed your wheel size correctly, what's the vehicle speed? Um, there's also a small section at the bottom here that says flags, and all those do is they enable if um, one of those features is active. So if I apply a little throttle here, you'll see that the throttle button is on. If I had an e-brake hooked up to the system and I hit it, you'd see the brake flag come on, and if the motor was turning, the regen flag would also come on. Um, so if, you, if we spin this again up, you'll see also that the throttle voltage goes up, the RPM of the motor is active, the vehicle speed is, is spinning as well. That's it for the video today. Whenever we have new products, we'll try and bring them out to the default parameter list as soon as possible. And if you have any recommendations for motors you'd like to see on that default parameter that are very popular and uh, you know, get enough requests, we'll try and add those to that list as well. Um, you can send us an email at info at ebikes.ca if you have any questions on this, uh, as well as any recommendations for, for new features. Thanks very much. See you later. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you.